Welcome back everybody, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2, where we left off last time. We were exploring the temple to Guan. Sorry for leaving so abruptly at the end of the last video, I was getting a very disapproving look for not being ready to go like I said I was going to be, so that was my bad. As you approach, a wood elf straightens over an altar to Guan. Her robes mark her as a high priestess. She arches and cracks her back loudly, a satisfied grin spreading across her face soon after. Jody, I do hope you are not getting into trouble now. Who, me? <laughs> no, I wouldn't dream of it. Adir points affably in approval. She smiles at the sight of a stranger. You are the high priestess of this temple? Do swine stink like shit? She hits you with a toothy smile, eyes glittering with amusement. I'm guessing you're not here to worship. Then what can I do for you? You must be getting a lot of people in here these days. Oh yes. People are afraid. Angry. Change can be frightening. But what did any of us come here for, if not a new beginning? Doesn't this place get a little damp? No more than anywhere else. No sense fighting it. The water sustains our faith, surely as it does these trees. She winks. You are devotees to Guan? What about Aethys' other manifestations? Gon's the only one that matters. Zo er, Jodi scoffs. Sewin shuts her eyes, exhales sharply, and then opens them again to regard you with a patient smile. The Shining God's got many faces, but they're all his to wear. Divine King Widewing, he saw the dawn stars, telling him of things to come. But it's gone with Sickle and Lantern. Let's come to the dead fire. It's gone, that's how you say it. Cool. Our gods returned, and he's gonna bring balance to the world. He's gonna right all the wrongs we have suffered. Gone will bring a new beginning for all of us when that hour comes. He's gonna straight up murder everyone. Hey, there's a abandoned cat. Let's go take it. I am just collecting all the pets. I think Edir has is in need of another friend. The pet. Yeah, there we go. What does it do? Three accuracy with melee attack. Yes. Yes, I think we're gonna put that in our pet slot. Sorry, Edir, you'll have to wait for your friend. Uh Edir can have the cat though. Alright, extra accuracy. Super important. That makes me happy for our melee characters. So it's time to leave, I guess. We uh did our two little side quests, gained a level, except for our Before Barbarian, who's very close to a level. So we have to look for Elf, Elifa, Elifa, and uh, Hasango, and who is the other person? Quests. Does it just show companion quests somewhere? I guess not. Hmm. Well, that's just silly. So to speak with Jyoti about her worsening nightmares. Is she available what to talk at the moment? For? She is not. Maybe she is. Yes. What do you want? Oh, we can talk to our sword. No. Uh, yeah. Adrift in a waking dream, Jyoti sways on her feet, sweating, muscles quivering. She whimpers low in her throat. I'm gonna watch her hallucinate. Her chest rises and falls, faster and deeper until she's very or very nearly heaving. Eyes wide and terrified, she chokes back a shriek, but then the vision seemed to wane. She calms, confused eyes searching your face. I was... God forbid. I saw myself in the midst of reaping unripe souls. I was murdering the one closest to me. Never woke with such a driving need for reaping before. It's making my hands shake. Maybe the dream would ebb if you killed somebody close to us. Her eyes slide to the left of you, and she clutches her lantern close, the soft glow of it casting an eerie shadow over half of her face. Seems the more souls I gather, the better I see Gon's will, and the less I get a wink of sleep. It's probably probably because you haven't gathered enough souls yet to appease Gon. <laughs> Don't you worry none about that. She snorts a laugh, eyes bright. I'll keep taking on as many as I can, until I'm fit to release them. Us Gonites. We're supposed to shepherd lost souls, not just gather them. The harvesting's only the first part. 
If I were to dump the souls, it might make me dream less, like before. Or, darn it, who knows? Maybe it'd just make it all worse. Either way, I've got to find my purpose. She turns her face away, bottom lip trembling slowly. Her fingers reach out for the hem of your shirt. She rubs the pads of her fingers over it, holding to you in the lightest of touches. Will you help me, Watcher? I'm going to touch the corner of her mouth. I'd do anything for you, Jody. Her happiness warms her whole face as a bright blush prickles over her skin. I was hoping you might would. Sometimes I feel like, with you by my side, I can stand against gods. Can I say? Seraphin's eyes close as, as or close as he nods along. I want to keep the souls for my own power. Why is there not an option for that? The more souls you gather, the more strongly you see your god's will. Keeping them would make you a better priestess. Keep holding them? Until when? It's only a matter of time before Gon breaks the wheel and brings the final harvest down upon us. Do you think I should keep reaping all throughout the darkness to keep collecting more and more while the Audra veins regrow throughout hell? The souls would be safe in the lantern until the world's ready to bloom again. Future Gonites could then shepherd multitudes into the rebirth cycle. But I wonder how many would be alive to see to it then? What if Kithkind can't make it to Aora's spring? Hmm. Let me dream on it and see how I feel. But if you think it'd save us, if it's what I'm meant to do, well, I trust you wouldn't lead me astray. Indeed. She nods once before turning away. Well, what else do we have to do for her quest? We have to take her to a luminous Audra pillar. You know how I've been saying there's nothing more important to me than us freeing you from Barith's bonds? Sure. Well, I meant that. I did. Edir's breath lingers in his chest and his mouth hangs ajar, throwing his statement into immediate doubt. But there's this other thing I need to see about. On the way, like. I was gonna tell you. In a journey full of obstacles, what's one more? Actually, why not? I use you for my ends all the time. Exactly. You understand. You, uh... <laughs> wait. How's that? He shakes it off and continues. This woman, I, uh... Well, love's not the right word. But she was something to me once, back in Gilded Vale. He pauses. Once Theos was gone, there wasn't much keeping me in Deerwood. Thought I'd be happier in Adir, where my folks had gone. It was nice seeing them again. Been almost since the war. But I didn't belong. Found I couldn't talk to anyone. Not just because of the funny way Adirans talk. Over there, across the ocean, it's like nothing I'd been through ever happened. Not the war, not the legacy. Even my parents missed most of it. And I'm glad about that. But all we had to talk about was stuff from when I was a boy. Then I thought of somebody I knew I could talk to. Maybe the last person. Just like that, I was back on a boat, going the other way. Last I saw her, she was going to New Hayamar. Went looking for her there, only to find that she'd left a long time ago. Anyway, I don't expect you to understand, but I gotta know she ended up alright. It sounds like she ended up with a son. Yeah, that's... that's something. Coming out of Deerwood during that time. When I knew her, she had another little boy, just a baby. But the legacy deprived him of a proper life. I never found out what happened to him. But with the Hollowborn, you didn't have to ask. Guess he got a brother, though. Adir falls quiet, blinking several times before noting your continued presence. You're sure you want to know where this leads? No, but I don't see a way to let this go. Least a ways not now. Last time I saw a lava, we got friendly. Now she's got a son. Adir's shrug is rigid. His smile at least half wince. Let's go. Alright, so, important to note, Adir might be a father. I think he'd be a good dad, to be honest. He seems to be sort of capable of that. Let's take a look around at some of the other places here. So there is a Temple of Magrin here. There's Mark van der Beij, a Forsaken Cat. Let's go loot that. There are a lot of animals in this game, like a lot. Someone is hiding male at, or ale and mead. Hiding male? Hiding ale and mead in rocks? That's just weird. 
Mark Vanderbige, what do you want? You find a man of middle years inspecting a metal tool unlike any you've seen. He has several similarly strange items on his belt, all clean and orderly. They look like the tools one might use to pull a tooth or shoe a horse, but much more delicate. He wears pristine, cream-colored robes. The muzzle of an archibus is visible just over his shoulder. His eyes brighten when he notices you. A good day, traveler. I see you've taken an eye to my instruments. If you've any interest in the medical sciences, you need only ask. Oh, well then, any questions? Tell me about yourself. I'm a researcher in the medical sciences. And before you ask, no, I don't mean animancy. Neither do I mean magic, nor, gods forbid, necromancy. Medicine, medicine. Study of the kith body, its inner workings and such. You should go with necromancy, it's way cooler. I've misgivings about magic use. It's useful, I'll grant you that. But it's a crutch. Stunts our scientific development, you understand. Makes me a bit unpopular, as you can no doubt imagine. Which is why I've got this arquebus here. What do you mean by unpopular? A patient of mine died under questionable circumstances. One morning they were fine, and the next they were dead. Someone is trying to discredit my work, I just know it. But they won't succeed. I came here to the archipelago to evade my rival's attempts at sabotage. And there certainly is quite a lot of work in the dead fire, I must tell you. I've He's told you of my troubles, person. I suppose it's the least I can do. Alchemy and religion. I don't really want those at the moment, so High Priest Hati. The Megronite Priest has the build of a boulder. His thick-set frame stretches his fine robes at the seams. He regards you with a steady, calm gaze, nodding and greeting. Be welcome. We gather to honor the goddess, for we must earn the strength to endure the darkest of life's battles. Megrin and I aren't on the best of terms. Do you believe so? It is not in might alone that Margren holds influence. There is purpose, conviction, achievement. You may honor her in many ways. I didn't expect to see so many foreigners at the temple. It is an opportunity to learn. What good is a fighter who knows how to defend against a single enemy? If we must one day fight one another, such is Margren's will. Each obstacle is a challenge we must answer. These are whetstones that sharpen us into fine blades. This is your temple? The Kira. Rain and wind is a better teacher than any priest. A fighter accustomed to comfort earns only bruises. Which way to the palace? The priest blinks. His smile is warm, but there's little amusement in it. Follow the path as it climbs the mountain. All the way to the serpent's crown. You will see it. Thanks. Well, I mean, it's not like I had any other options. I would have asked you, like, teach me to be a fighter. Let's spar. Something along those lines. And instead, I'm just gonna steal your barrel. Okay, there was a person over here we wanted to talk to. She has her rather wide array of guards. Katrin. Leading me dry. All I needed was a few damn components. Oh shit, I have to kill her. For what quest? The woman mutters to herself, glancing resentfully between the constructs that surround her. Why do I need to kill her? Who wants her dead? Katrin. Not that one. Not that one. No. 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 Oh, she was a bounty, right. Okay. Well, she does have a fairly significant group around her. Not the least of which is a few constructs. And maybe the devotees won't join in. I'm just hoping that the constructs will be the only ones to join in. If that's the case, we'll fight them on the stairs. I think that's the best place for it. But that also sucks because we are not going to be able to do that very easily. Maybe we'll fight her here. We'll put Edir here, with those two constructs. Him to fight her and start the thing, and then her to tank that one. Captain. And those two to DPS, sort of like this. Okay, let's try this out. Yes. Leading me dry. All I needed was a few damn components. What are you doing here? What? I haven't the time necessary to illuminate you. Be on your way. Well, Ketrin, I assume. Say your farewells. Oh, not this again. There's a dozen of you fools in every city. Okay, so we're not gonna fight her yet. We've had a couple of attempts. It did not go well. It's the steel construct. It's just 
Like, if you... Oh, I can't see its stats because we're not in combat, but it has just monstrous defenses and, like, 13 armor. It's really hard to kill. Let's go to the Temple of Wrath. We'll come back to that later. Ugh. That's a corpse. Oh, that's a steal if I try to steal from the corpse, so... Maybe not that. Who else do we have to talk to in this area? High Priest Kasu. And that is also stealing. But maybe I could lockpick it for some experience. There's a way. It's finished. Cool. An ailing Amoa priest regards you regards your approach with curiosity. He coughs into his sleeve, stained with a splatter of silvery flecks. His eyes go large, and he stumbles a step forward. Bereth sends a messenger at long last. Finally, truly. He sucks in a sharp breath and doubles over, coughing hard. Come closer to the altar. Come inside. The temple welcomes all to worship, most especially you. I ask only for no talking. Not until we pay our respects to Bereth, to Vlikuhu. Let us pray. He bows his head. I cross my arms over my chest and watch. Deity of life and death, the endless devourer who encompasses all existence, hear this prayer, this voice chiming. I beseech you, Kohopa and Tangaloa, to ready this shell for sucking. Purify my soul in preparation for the coming of the next cycle. Digest all of my devotion. Swallow my sorrows, even the smallest swell, so I can be spit on the morrow. And Rikuhu, Bereth, my god and goddess both, the eels that churn in ceaseless cycle, the new and the next and... From life to death to life again, blessed be an end. Nodding fervently, he accepts your ending to the invocation. He presses his hands over the center of his chest, touching the item beneath his shirt. Then raising his head, he cracks a frail smile. All right. I will address your inquiries best as I can. So ask. I'm looking for Yasir's tomb. Do you even know what it takes to make it deep into the hanging sepulchers? To make it alive? I know the way, but... His words catch in his throat, and he curves forward in a spine-wracking fit, hacking until he's flush-faced. Fumbling a goatskin flask to his lips, he drinks into the minnow- a minnow-silver liquid dribbles over and slicks his chin. Better. Drinking mercury? He wheezes, wiping a palm over his chin. The timing's getting tighter, and there is one thing before the end. Something only one touched by Bereth can do. You covet something. Covet. You covet something you can't get to. Something you can't access because you lack Bereth's chime. That's right. I've got no hope, but you do. He tugs at a chain about his neck. My eels. My infinity coil keeps rattling. Pendants resonating with your chime. The priest presses the palm of his hand to the front of his chest. He stares, scrutinizing your face. He shakes his head, disappointed. The coil resonates, but it's weak. You could unseal the way, but you'd die inside, I think. My chance would be lost then. <laughs> lost with your remains. I can handle myself. He releases his grip on the pendant with a feeble nod. I'd best not let this chance pass. There's a sacred text. The eulogy to Isaiah. It's been buried in the catacombs beneath the temple for centuries, next to his champions. I need it. Of course, the tombs. They only open to the dead, or those bearing Bereth's chime. I'll get the eulogy for you if you let me into the hanging sepulchers. I prayed for decades, night to day, and night again. Now, here you are, just in time. Means Bereth sent you to see to my success. The priest bobs his head. From beneath his shirt, he untucks a stone-carved circlet in the image of an eel. 
The pendant vibrates along the length of its chain, thrumming harder the closer he holds it to you. You are my best chance. Or only, maybe. Take the coil. It'll open the crypts. Bring me a Sayer's eulogy, and I'll teach you all I know of Ferreth's Arcana. Okay. We'll go do that, and we'll ask you questions when we come back. Where is the stairs? Where are the stairs? I guess. It's more accurate. There are no stairs. Unless I can go down there. I guess not. Unless it's the altar we have to grab. No, that's definitely stealing. I guess we go outside and then down you must somewhere. Gather your party before venturing forth. Surprised our barbarian hasn't quite leveled yet. He's so close. Our barbarian chanter, I should say. Those are the hanging sepulchers. We already have a quest we're supposed to be doing. We should probably go do that first. Let's go do that right now, and then we'll deal with Barath's quest. We'll go up to the Spire of the Soul Seers a little later. Seekers? Oh crap, went the wrong way. We need to go up this way. We need to get this conch shell so we can do that treasure thing in the basement there. And by that I mean the Undercity. Old City? Old City. I wonder what that is. The Sacred Stair. I don't know if that's actually... Looks like a thing. Why am I going... Oh, I guess... This is technically the quickest way. Although I thought, oh, maybe not. It's a lot of winding there, so maybe. Spire of the Soul Seers. Hmm. We'll have to check that out soon as well. But first, a conch shell. I don't remember who we're supposed to get it from now. It's been like three videos, or four videos since then. Which is a couple hours of gameplay. There's so much to explore and do in the city. So many little side quests to sink our teeth into. We are now in Serpent's Crown, so we are supposed to find Takano, I believe? Or is it Muhai? Um, it might be counted as done quest, because we kind of did part of it early and it's a little bit bugged. Under here, though. Where is call? There we go. Takano's Villa. Let's go there and see what we can find. It's a lovely city. I would totally love to live up in this district. Look how pretty it is. It's like a waterfall. See the river below? Or a river below? I don't know if it's just the river or if it's just one of many rivers. Let's just go right in. Gather your party before venturing forth. No point in beating around the bush. Oh, there's guards in here. Yes? Alright, stage one. Can we just walk in? Leave it. Thank you. Um... Kano is, why are you swinging in sort of the direction of your, I'm gonna guess you're a teacher of some sort? It's gonna be hard to get past that guy. I can do it though. Oh no. I'll see it done. We got caught, but nobody cares. Well, that's good. Let's just talk to Takano. An older Mataru man stands ringed by younger Hoana, apprentices or pupils it seems. His robes shimmer with quartz beating, and his perfume announces his presence from across the room. Yet beneath his finery he looks like a fighter gone to seed. Disused muscles flop from his arms, and flab pads him like so many layers of silk. 
He looks up and notices you. Greetings, and welcome to my home. He gestures to the lavish room, puffing his broad chest out a little more. For what do you come to my villa? Read his soul. Ah, uh, beaming, he, he spreads his arms wide. Your essence slips from your body into Kano's soul and folds yours, like a warm, oily thing. As his fears and questions seep into you, your perspective shifts to his. At first, you worried this. You at first you worried this death godlike before you had been sent by the Valian debt collectors. It would be a low trick taking advantage of your famous hospitality, but then those Valians are crafty. Perhaps if your villa were bigger, then they might know you were a man worthy of respect. At least you have the shell. You tuck it away not only for safekeeping, but also because you are a little ashamed of it. How can such a simple, ugly thing be sacred to a god? But it was a gift from the queen, and so you keep it. Your gaze strays to the wall. Yes, you must knock down that section there, install a wide, grand window, once you have the money. You retreat from Takano's soul to find him watching you with a placid smile. I hear you have a rare Andrade artifact. The Cornet of Waves. It is a conch shell, but very important. To receive it is the highest honor. He nods vigorously, jiggling the loose flesh of his neck. He sounds like he's trying to convince himself more than you. The Queen gave it to me as thanks for my years of service. I was her personal bodyguard when she was a child, you know. He folds his hands over his considerable paunch. I need the Cornet of Waves. But it was a gift from the Queen. His eyes widen. It is unusual for a man of my standing to give such a thing away. I can pay you for it. I am not some quarrel merchant. I do not sell my treasures. With a little coin, you could really fix this place up and install a window over there for starters. Then you speak of a barter. That is different. What do you propose? He twists a ring around on his finger as he fixates on the elaborate stained glass. Each pane must cost a small fortune. And I'm not good at diplomacy, and I'm not very good at bluffing. So, I'll give him 2500. Very well. But only because I see you want the cornet so badly. Take it. With my blessing. He presents you with a large, lustrous conch, conch apparently, shell. The surface is inscribed with symbols, and the tip is fitted with a silver mouthpiece. So we now have both cornets. We have to go back to it? Dario and tell him that we have his shell. Or we can go loot the treasure down there first. Now we'll get the experience, and then we'll kill him if it comes to it. If he tries to take our treasure, we spent money on this, and if he tries to take our treasure, I'm going to stab him right in the face. Just straight up, just right in the face, just I saw the back of your head. I thought you were some huge island squirrel. This ain't about me, farmer. South exit. Did I arrive on the Invincible 4? Yes, I did. Um, gullet. We need to go to Delver's Row, where we get horrifically lost. Or not Delver's Row, but on our way to Delver's Row, kinda. Why did you dump me on this side of the district? I would prefer the other side, but that's fine. I guess we're coming from that direction, so it puts us there. Kinda makes sense, I guess. Don't those be the tools of the Animancers, Art? Maybe. But I'm no Animancer, that's for sure. I ain't out to play God. Only serve mine. One could say it's both. Darius hot out. Good, we don't have to remember where it was. It gives us the shortcut. Because I don't remember where it was. It was right, right, left, forward, something. I think we're going to have to kill this guy, though, to be honest. He's going to try and take our treasure, and I don't like that. What do you require? Is this the artifact you're looking for? Let us hope so. Else Takano has played you for a fool. Already, he's ordered a shipment of marble with your money. He examines the conch, tracing his delicate fingers over the Andre symbol's pleasure signs in his eyes. And now the real work begins. You must take this to the Undercraft. He hands the shell back to you. Funny how they never mention the real work up front. Hi, Miko. It is but a jaunt. It lies just below Delver's Row. It is where goods of questionable provenance originate. Take the lift from Delver's Row, not the lift in the gullet, mind you. Okay. My associate Gwenfen will await you outside a passage in the old Juana style. What then? Then you explore the perils and treasures of the old city for something I seek. He smiles. Among the ruins is a certain mosaic 
Go on. The shell you found will reveal it to you. Gwenfen can explain all when you find her. He leans close, braces squeaking. It is said the old city was once as grand as Serpent's Crown. Whatever treasure you find there is yours to keep. I see. For now, take this. Consider it an advance. A tear attacked me after I left. Well, we wouldn't know that either. We haven't been attacked by her yet. I think the quests are a little bit... slightly bugged. And also that wall apparently causes some problems for us. Let's go to the... Oh, Delver's Row. I wonder if these people are going to still be mad at us for killing that one merchant. Probably. I would imagine that it's... They're a little tense towards me now. Luckily we already unlocked the lift part. And so down we go. You the watcher? Dario said you can pass. I know he did. Maybe I know it. I think we're almost out of time on this video too though, so we might be calling it for the night. It is almost bedtime after all. Alright, we're just gonna make our way over there. Sorry I had to cut out a couple barks there. But I guess we're pretty much done anyways, so we'll call it here. And in the next video, we'll finally finish this conch shell thing. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.